you like your unfunny heist films all dummied up with forgettable characters, oh-so-clever plot twists, boring dialogue, less suspense than watching a slot machine, and comedian Eddie Murphy acting on the fumes of his once brilliant career with a performance so unfunny he makes Kevin James look like Kevin Hart? We've got all that and much, much more on this Thanksgiving Day with Tower Heist. And before we flush it, we're going to take it out and play with it a little. We're here to flush it so you don't have to see it. Happy Turkey Day, everyone! I am on tonight your head pumpkin pie cinematic flusher right here in the restroom. As always, I'm joined by my lovely cream corn cone. God, fuck. As always, I'm John. Fuck, I gotta do it all again. Damn it. Well, if I do this before I'm, I start drinking, I'm okay. After I know, you've time, had like know. 14 drinks now. Not 14, I've had 13. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, never mind. Uh, Happy Turkey Day, everyone. I am on a night here at Pumpkin Pie Cinematic Flusher right here in the restroom. As always, I'm joined by my lovely Cream Corn Co. Cinematic Flushers, Crazy Cranberry Sauce, Colleen Griffin. Gobble, gobble, gobble. And Marvelous Smashed Potatoes, Norcrest. I'm stuffed. Our special guest this time out previously assisted with the flushing of Clock Stoppers back in episode 110. He's one-third the team over at the Movie Madness podcast. Movie Madness is a show for people who are crazy about movies, covering all the latest releases, classic films, and guilty pleasures with a healthy dose of criticism, insight, and humor. You can find their show on all the streaming outlets, as well as their own website, moviebadnesspodcast.com. Please welcome back host, Doug Eichelman. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Honor. <laughs> Thank hey, you for... <laughs> and happy Sorry. Turkey Day! Let me say that again. Thank you so much for having me. Every time Raging Buddha B-Movie Queen Norcrest spends some time in our stall and reads the writing on the restroom wall, she's never quite the same. Let's see who turns up in this week's Raging Buddha Stats. <laughs> Hey, Daramon, this is Odessa from Tower Heist, and these are the stats. Did you know that I trained with the world-class safe cracker so I could crack the safe for real now? I improvised the entire scene where I suggestively taught Eddie Murphy how to crack that safe. This movie was like Inception. References within references that nobody quite got like, there's a Shrek balloon in the parade, and Eddie Murphy was in Shrek. Both the car and the parade are a reference to Ferris Bueller's Day Off Now, which Matthew Broderick was in. PS 104, which both Ben Stiller and Alan Alda's characters went to, is a magnet school for museum studies, and Ben Stiller was in Night at the Museum Now, Man. I'm Odessa, and these were the stats. Films should have been called either Ocean's Idiots or Comedy Heist. That was the only thing that was stolen from this film. Fucking That's comedy. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> I, think I, laughed, I think I laughed twice. Woo. This film was made during Ben Stiller's unfunny period, uh, which sadly seems to get longer and longer as the years roll on. Likewise for Eddie Murphy. Holy shit, guys. How do you cast this much comedic talent no, in did, one film and not do anything with them? Did uh, Eddie Murphy see like a YouTube clip of Jay Farrow and just decide to be his... <laughs> Like Jay Farrow's impression of him. I think that's he, I think for the entire right movie. There. Yeah, he's become uh yeah an impression of himself, and that's really un- that's we'll talk about that more as we when we first when I mean, we see no, him. But... Like Jay Farrow does a better Eddie Murphy than Eddie Murphy did of himself in this movie. How is that possible? So. How did Eddie Murphy? We'll talk. I want to talk. I really want to address that. Of all the people in this film, he's the most offensive in this film. Uh, and I have a real issue with uh, some of this. It, there's it, a lot. Yeah, there's a there's lot, a lot of but to be offended of. Right. Uh, this film had a worse payoff <laughs> than the season finale to Sopranos. That was my final note on the opening. Didn't the Sopranos have, like, Journey? Yeah, we didn't even get that at the end of this movie. We got we got, <laughs> we got, we got, we got one smirk look. At, all right, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm already getting irritated. The folks, I'm like, I'm a turkey. This, this ruined my whole Thanksgiving, man. I'm up chucking stuffing and mashed potatoes as we speak. Soft jazz music intro, uh, maybe A, take a brief nap, and uh, B, fool me into thinking I was watching another Ocean's Eleven sequel. At least the music-wise, anyway. And then uh, then this comes up, uh, a Brett Ratner film. <laughs> the theater ushers will now be passing know, out your vomit it was, buckets. It was like, oh, um, and that... Yeah, like, take... <laughs> and now we know why Eddie Murphy didn't get to host the Oscars. Yeah, uh, please take one of the vomit buckets and pass them down the aisle so everybody has them. <laughs> what you ripping through this? Uh, did anybody? Gonna, everyone's going to need more than one, though. Did anybody yeah. see this in the theater before we get too far uh, into this? No, I did not. Okay, you're out. No. You're out. Griff? No. Nah. 
<laughs> so, yeah, wow, it's pretty sad when all four of us have been Stephen like, Tyler, fuck it. That was enough. I was excited when I heard about it and the concept of all these people. And I, I had hope. And I was naive in my hope. When I sent this over to uh, Doug, I told him, I said, I, I sent him the trailer. And I said, I didn't laugh once during the trailer. You know you're in trouble when you're not laughing yeah. during anything mm -hmm. in the trailer. And that's, that's supposed to be the highlight. That's really true. Um, yeah, it is. You're supposed to put something at least uh, appealing in the trailer, and if there's nothing funny in a comedy trailer, then you know you're in trouble right off the bat. And I was right. The whole film is I'm stone faced except for one. But can chuckle. I just say I knew it was going to be terrible the minute I saw Gabrielle Sibide in the trailer with the Jamaican accent. Yeah, I know. All right. We'll oh, I know, yeah. right? A rooftop up pools with a hundred dollar bills painted on the bottom. Standard issue uh, for rich assholes. I don't know. I can uh, ask that question as the film opens with uh, Mr. L and Alda, who plays the. Rich asshole in question. Oh, in yeah, film. yeah. And hey, a nice how swim. about we, ca we, we cast Alan Alda as a rich asshole? Sounds like a great idea. Yeah, who came up Mr. with that? How did he get in this film? We're going to talk about like, the uh, cast members, but he's the like, first yeah, one. Yeah, I, like, I want to know the story behind Matthew Broderick getting in. Oh, right, well, well, I'm going to I'm going to. Yeah, we're jumping ahead on that. We're, we'll talk about that. Punk ass bitches walk on the other side of the street. Uh, which is where Ben Stiller should actually be walking at this point in his career. <laughs> uh, I will talk about that. As I said, that was an Eddie Murphy. No, I, look, I miss him making me laugh. Who? He's Stiller ben or Murphy? Yes. Both. I would say both. I miss both, both of them. Both. Megan. Yeah. Because they both put in great performances recently and roles where they're not supposed to make you laugh. Dude, the <laughs> make me laugh again. I need to laugh. The Tower. Uh, basically, Trump Tower with a few letters switched out, uh, which eerily reflects this world in 2016. Who knew that in 2011 we'd have this prophecy, guys? Four minute mark. <laughs> but again, the Simpsons already predicted that. Michael too, so. Moore knew. Uh, yeah, <laughs> everybody knew. Everybody knew, but the general American public. Okay. Michael Moore, he might have known, or he can always edit to make it so he did know. Yeah. <laughs> no, he called. He called it months ago. I wish he should have also predicted how bad this film was going to be. Uh, thank God we have this crappy heist music to keep us awake as we watch this boring opening credit sequence of two men going to work. Was anybody already out of the film by this point? Ben, ben still plays an apartment manager for a high-end apartment complex, and he's just getting ready to go to work. Alan Alda is the owner of that said high-end complex, and he's getting ready for work. And we got to watch this, uh, you know, this insanely long opening credit sequence of these two guys just getting ready to go to work. Who gives a shit? I agree with you. This is where I checked out. I was like, oh, my God. It's ripped off from another score. I thought of it at the time, but I hated this movie so much I forgot about it. <laughs> and I have to remember. But what, what annoyed me, though, was like, I don't even know what station that is that Ben Stiller's listening to on the radio. Where they're talking <laughs> about cheeses. No, that's... <laughs> That's, that's a better it's film, the though. Same that... show The Rock was listening to on the rundown. Oh, right? they, oh there you go. You're what? right. You're right. You know what? Like, um, <laughs> oh my god. Even like NPR and Ira Glass was like, nah, I'm good. Uh, I need a man before the. Oh, that's right again. I, I'm not going to do the Jamaican accent. I'll let the crest, or crest handle that. You don't want to do Jamaican. Thank you. I I, I need a man. This is how good Gabriel but they sound in the movie. Yeah. Exactly. Edit, yeah. Edit, edit, edit. <laughs> Uh, I, I need a man before these pricks throw me out of the country. Uh, guess your sexually abusive father from Precious is out of the question. Hi, uh, Gabriel. Oh. oh. I knew. I knew. <laughs> hey, oh. Hey, is, that the last, is that the last Precious joke? Uh, that, yeah, believe it or not, it actually is. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Uh, yeah, now I'm, scra I'm quickly scratching out yeah, all my other of Precious all jokes. all the Precious jokes. That's today. a good one. That's a good one, right? Really? Yeah, you, I know. No, you went from a sexually abusive father. <laughs> father. A sexually abusive father. I look, wow, it's going to be a tough Thanksgiving. No seconds for me, guys. <laughs> and one, one trip around that buffet table. Holy shit. Uh, he's a quarter Cherokee. We need an Indian. Uh, give it up to veteran actor Judd Hirsch to drop the first racist line in only six minutes into the running time, guys. He almost, yeah. beat, he almost beat my record here in the show. <laughs> he did, I think he might have. What is that all about? Because the rest of the film really doesn't have any of those kind of lines. Because it's, it makes no sense in the context it's of not the funny. film. It's also not funny. But. And also, Michael Pena, is he Native American? No, he's a he's Mexican. Just, I think he's Mexican or something. I don't know. We'll I'm pretty we'll sure talk, we'll come that back to he's that. of the Latino persuasion. Latino. I'm not, it, I'm not, I don't know if he's Mexican. You know, you don't want to like insult somebody from Guatemala and say they're Mexican. No, yeah. I just kept thinking, you know what? When I see him, is Scientology. All right, let's And before we yeah. even continue, right, yeah, we see that. But let, I'm going to do a recap of the, of the people we've seen that are, are supposedly comics. Ben Stiller, Alan Alda. 
uh, and Judd, Judd, Judd Hirsch. Hirsch. Uh, three comics. Guess what? Five minutes in, nobody's fucking funny. How do you get this much talent? We're not even done the list yet. We're not even. We don't have the full comedic list yet. But already five minutes in. When did you guys know you were in trouble? Like right about here or the first two minutes of the movie? Pretty much the trailer in the theater. Uh, you know, five years ago when I saw it. You know, the average apartment in New York costs $5 million. Uh, good thing uh, we introduced That's this That's not new... true, by the way. All right. Good thing we introduced this new employee. Uh, so still have someone to uh, unload this expeditional dump on. And they always have these. And that's Michael Pena, right? He's the, uh, he comes yeah. as Pena. a new, uh, I'm sorry, Pena. He is the. Um... Provisional elevator operator. Yeah. And seriously, <laughs> doesn't that sound like a, like a sexy boyfriend from a babysitter's club novel? He sounds like Rico <laughs> Suave from that song. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So Michael Payne is in the uh, he is the uh, being interviewed in this, and he says uh, they never check my balls at the BK, uh, which is actually strange since they always almost check mine, or they almost always check mine. Man, I wish I can get that dyslexia under control when I've been drinking. Cannot uh, <laughs> it's not, I don't think it's any funnier either. I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. All right, we'll roll with it. Uh, we never take tips at the tower, which basically <laughs> explains why you need to rob an old rich uh, Alan Alda later in the film. If they were all working at TGI Fridays, this whole film could have been avoided. Right? Is that what it comes down to? If you're, because they would have been getting tips. Hello! So their life would have been so much I know. Better. I just solved the whole problem here. I think I solved the whole film. Josh, I'm freaking out. As well, you should be since your brother is now the new Batman and uh, you're in this lame uh, heist caper with Ben Siller. Night minute mark. Hey, oh, that was Casey. <laughs> uh, all right, Doug got that one. All right. In case that was Casey Affleck turns up on screen. Uh, I guess this is his career, right? This is all these just second rate work and shitty movies like this. That was his career? Really? No. Come really? On Come on. Hey, the budget was hey. only seventy-five million. That, that, he's actually in the running for an Oscar nomination, but he's also being accused of sexual assault. Ouch! All right. Well, this is gonna be a fun. Yeah. This is gonna be a fun Thanksgiving. It's, it's, it's your typical Thanksgiving, guys. The Cosby. Yeah, list. <laughs> There's always it's, one relative it's, at the it's, table. It's an, uh, no, it's an Affleck family Thanksgiving. There's always one relative at the Thanksgiving table. It's a little off. <laughs> Maybe hey, this year it's Casey Affleck. Do you ever think he he gets the roles that Giovanni Ribisi doesn't pay? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think you're right, Doug. The second call. Yeah, you, you think he's the second one, right? He's the second yeah. call. They oh call God, Bonnie, and he's like, nah, I'm busy. And they're like, okay, well, let's call Casey. Casey Affleck ought to play uh, Robin in a new Batman film. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> wouldn't that it be have, awesome? It would have to be like a Batman 66. You yeah. wouldn't do it now. You'd do it like the old style. No. That would be awesome. <laughs> that, that, that might would, actually work, that would be though, like the two Game of them of, No, it would be like Game of Thrones meets the DC Universe. Uh, I went to Yale 20 years ago, and now I'm a squatter. Uh, you were also Ferris Bueller over 20 years ago, and now you're a bloated carcass appearing in this turd. <laughs> well done, man, sir. Oh, 11 minute mark. Does Matthew this, uh, Broderick uh, have type 2 diabetes, or is he pregnant? What is He looks terrible in this film. He looks he like looks he literally so rolled out of rehab. I'm telling you, he got dared to do this movie, and I'd like to know what the other <laughs> half of the dare was that was worse than doing this movie. <laughs> he looks terrible. This is not the Brad Matthew no, Broderick I remember. He, I have heard stories by him on other movies, and oh. he said, like, well, this is rock bottom. Yeah. <laughs> he has literally hit rock bottom here. He's A, not funny. B, looks, he looks like he hasn't slept in about three I, months. I want to hug him and be like, it's going to be okay. Yeah, he needs a hug. He really needs it. He looks, I mean, I was so disappointed because, man, I grew up with Matthew Broderick. Obviously, all these great films he's done. And then he tried, I was shocked, actually, when I saw him on screen. I, I didn't even think he was in the film. I just, this is one of these things, you roll the thing and you don't, you don't pay attention. And then the right. door opens, and there's Ferris Bueller looking like he's, like, coming off a heroin addiction. No, he doesn't look like a heroin addiction. <laughs> he just looks sad. <laughs> sad. It's depressing. Isn't it, isn't it sad, Honor, that from our from our youth, the yes. two people that Christopher Knight and Val Kilmer and Matthew Broderick and Ferris Bueller, then to now, you see them and you say, you know what? We're not doing too bad, to be honest with you. <laughs> Well, Val Kimmer, though, he's looking pretty bad, too. I mean, he's he's gained about 400 pounds. Dude, I think he's, I think dude, he's slimmed down dude, as of late. He turned it into Chaz Bono. Woo, no, no second help in the stuffing for you, sir. <laughs> Jesus. You cannot deny no, that they he, don't look very they, similar <laughs> if you put them side by side. All right. Yeah, they, well, they're talking about that he might have cancer. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, oh. Well, he says he's cancer-free now, but that, that doesn't. he gained a lot of weight. We're not, I'm not going to get Val Kilmer's a whole well, separate podcast. Wait, I, do you not know that cancer treatment makes you gain a lot of weight? 
Um, okay, yes. All right, I, I, I'm not a total... Also, also, oh, also, he was roommates with Will Forte. Oh, that's right. He was roommates back in the... That yeah. forgives a lot. All right, we'll forgive. All right, so we're not going to... We're not going to... Yeah, this is not the Val Kilmer show. We're going to let him... That we that's a like whole separate podcast I know, I know. That's but like circling back to Mr. No, um, no, I need that reality show like yesterday. And my first real job was it's shoveling... Not... All right, we'll come, I, we'll come back. And my first real job was shoveling horse shit at the Aqueduct racetrack. Uh, not unlike the horse shit uh, Ratner is shoveling at us right now. I See, I don't even know if that was worth interrupting you for. Uh, hey, oh. <laughs> Well, yes, there you go. That was Val and all to just recap in his uh, career before he became owner of this stupid fucking building. How come all these rich fucking oh, assholes always started out shoveling shit somewhere? Uh, that's, it's a bullshit. Like, not you. all of them. I don't figure about you working in some fucking horse stable and now you're a bajillion zillionaire <laughs> and you're a fucking prick. Whoa. All right. Shoot the tires. Uh, watching Ben Stiller chase after a van on foot is the equivalent of watching Jason Bourne as an apartment manager. 15 minute mark. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I was, I, you know what I said? I said he was doing his best Tom Cruise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the same thing. What is he doing? Okay, so recap. What happens is the building owner, Alan Alda, looks looks like appears he's getting kidnapped uh, through the basement in this van. He gets thrown into a van and takes off. Ben Stiller is just an apartment manager of this building. Why he would even chase after this guy is beyond me and not just call the well, cops. He thought and let his him boss was being kidnapped. So yeah, but you wouldn't. Ch- yeah, but he's chasing after him like Jason Bourne. I mean, he says he's running out of the building. Or not that, I mean, not even like the, you know, Matt Damon one. It's the, uh, I would say the Jeremy Renner, Jason Bourne. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. He's hey, I, I like that movie. Resting Sorry. bitch face, uh, Jeremy Renner. Uh, yeah, that poor guy. Jeremy Can Renner I ask a dumb question about this? Go ahead. They're kidnapping him. But earlier in the movie, at the very beginning, he's just coming in and going from the building as he as he pleases. So why do you even need to kidnap the guy when he could have just <laughs> hopped on the subway before this even happened? Oh, that's true. I guess I mean, he could have was... left. It, well, yeah, yeah, it appears to be a kidnap. We'll explain what happens in a second. But you're right. He could have he could have easily just left. They arrest him for fleeing. But how are you fleeing when you're not? Arrest, you know, he was basically a free man up until they actually, well, because you know, they, were, like they was... were coming to arrest him. First, Ben Stiller sees the car that's been parked there for two days and there's no ticket on the car. And then he tells the doorman to lock the door because there was somebody, some other gotcha. building got robbed recently. So he thinks that there's a robbery happening. So he puts the thing in lockdown. So this, this was his whole contingency plan. Is... Well, Everybody yeah, well, get ready for a fake kidnapping the minute the police start well, to come to get me. What happened was the rich guy is trying to make a break for it because he realizes the FBI is closing in. So he arranges to get out of the building unseen by hiring guys to drive this dry cleaning van to um, pick him up and take him out so he's not seen leaving through the front. So right. he thinks he's getting away. Ben Siller right. thinks he's being kidnapped because he's, he's not. He's trying to flee right now. So, yeah, he's so, basically it, about to be indicted for... Shitty writing right yeah. here, because obviously it's not clear <laughs> no, that's... what's actually happening. Right, and to recap the plot, he's being indicted for financial uh, uh, injustices anyway. So he's basically, he's not being kidnapped. He had people grab him to flee before the FBI can show up. And Taya uh, Leone, I'm going to talk about one second, uh, to arrest him. So basically, uh, the line is, uh, this was not a kidnapping, it was an attempt to flee. And then I said, nice to see Taya Leona still getting work these days. 16 minute mark. Uh, she keeps Are turning up. Are you kidding up. me? She has one of the most high, like, she has one of the highest rated series. She does? She's yes. on Madam Secretary. It's one of the yes. best. Oh, on all, right. all right. Well, I stand correct. All right. So, I'm, well, it is nice to see Taya Leona But in 2011, I don't think she had that much going on because, as we know, it didn't. Uh, yeah. Her husband was, you know, too busy being a sex addict. So hey, well, this, wrong with this that. is the last thing she did. You know, she did Tower yeah, Heisen no. went right into Madam Secretary. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, right. no, no. He, Madam no. Secretary started in 2014. She took a couple years break to just sort of get herself together get after the together. whole shit with David Duchovny went down. Well, David Duchovny was living his real life like Red Shoe Diaries. <laughs> <laughs> my hat's off to Taya Leone, though, because she tried her best to, like, work it through with him. And then he just couldn't, literally, could not keep his dick in his pants. Ouch. So, no, oh, well, there yeah, you go. I uh, wish we all had that problem. Uh, yeah. She's <laughs> she, so sad. You'd like yeah, to I have know. A sex I, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't. I'm pretty. I'm pretty uh, restrained. Sorry, Anthony Dinar. But she's uh, all. I just want to say, Taylor Leone, she's all right. She's, she's no, she is. Her. I've always, I've always she, personally liked her. I wish I'm she was just a better she, film. She ended up on the upside. She's on one of the best shows on television, and she's dating Tim Daly. She's about as believable as an FBI agent as she uh, was in just about anything else she appeared in over the last 20 oh. years. Okay, so after all of that dick sucking, <laughs> I immediately trash her in the next comment. Sorry, Tia, uh, but I'm glad you're doing well now. Tia. Uh, 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 <laughs> it's also Kayleen, not Kayleen, but I keep screwing that up too. 
Uh, a judge released uh, Mr. Sean $10 million bail uh, because if he didn't, we wouldn't have a film to watch. Damn. Hey-o. All right. It's not even really a hey-o. It's just a, it's just a depressing end note on that one. Uh, you have Steve McQueen's park. Ah, uh, par. You have Steve McQueen's car parked in your living room, which will in no way be a plot point later in the film. 21 minute mark. Did know. anybody oh know immediately God. that car was going to be the, the crux of the whole fucking movie? Uh, the car. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> It's, it's so when it's when they so, have to hit you over the head with the with foreshadowing with the turkey like, leg really? hit you over the head with a turkey really? leg it's ridiculous uh either that or you got no balls uh Leon, Le, leone momentarily thought she was talking to brett ratner <laughs> that was the other, so what happens they indict him they put him under house arrest alan alda gets and is he's going to be indicted but he is put uh, he gets released on 10 million dollars bail which i find unbelievable to begin with and as a result of that he has to be put under house arrest at the top penthouse floor of his apartment he lives on the fucking roof or near the roof i should say lester tried to step off that subway platform tonight uh which no doubt was many moviegoers reaction when they saw the film 25 minute mark that's a woof that was a rough one my mom was watching this with me oh i can't would you she, stop she would you screaming like no, there no, we go no. even like, on oh, thanksgiving oh, you movie. have to your long-suffering mother has to watch all these cinematic turds with you i don't know i don't know why you do the woman she offered though i, I don't know no my mom she goes, well at least it's a comedy right no so, yeah right <laughs> with in quotes in quotes <laughs> this is though she did say though this is definitely much better than the other movies you guys <laughs> oh, oh well it's not well not like megaforce <laughs> which was the best ever yeah, oh she uh, loved that so hardcore that was so terrible Homo eroticism at his best. Uh, what are you? <laughs> what, what are you, a tone master? Every one of Stiller's quips drops like a brick-sized turd into the cinematic bowl. I don't think he wanted to be there. I don't know if this was he was under contract by the studio or what. He just doesn't look like he's, he's, he puts no energy into anything he's doing on screen. This whole movie wasn't comfortable because of all the people who felt like they didn't want to be here. I don't think anybody wanted to be there. It's a seventy-five million uh, dollar budget. Sibide wanted to be there. I can tell. Well, you that. yeah, all right, one person. Yeah, but <laughs> at a seventy-five million dollar budget, obviously these guys were all paid very well. I think most of the budget went to Murphy. We haven't even gotten to him yet, but hang on, he's coming up. But I don't understand. Like, everybody on screen literally looks like they don't want to be there. Nobody's doing any effort beyond what you know is required of them. You know, per scene per day, except for like you said, Gabatori. And maybe Casey Affleck because he's just happy to get right. fucking work. Um, but everybody else is just sleepwalking. Well, maybe Michael Pan Pina or Pana or whatever the hell they pronounce it. Well, no, I like whenever I saw like Matthew Broderick on this, I was like, guys, somebody give him a hug. He needs help, please. Uh, Josh, this car is irreplaceable. Just like the 104 minutes we uh, had before watching this film. 29 minute mark. Uh, yeah, Ratner, you suck. All right, let's keep going. You're all fired. Uh, but unfortunately, this turd still has an, over an hour left of running time. Over an hour of running time left. So let me recap. So what happens is um, because he is under financial, Alan Alda is financially screwing everybody. He screws up their pension and actually uses up the pension, just spends it on bullshit of the, of the employees, of the apartment employees. Mr. Stiller is upset about that because he feels he's the one who handed over the pension to uh, Alan Alda handle. They, he stole the money. What's his name gets upset and comes up. Uh, Stiller comes upset, comes up to the penthouse and, and basically beats up his car a little bit. Just breaks the glass. He really's not doing anything uh, super damaged because this, of course, is a major plot point. We'll talk about later on, so we can't do too much to it. And as a result, he gets fired by Judd Hirsch. Uh, him and Michael Pena, and then who's the other fucking guy? Casey Affleck, I guess, fired too. Uh, Kovacs, want to get drunk? Taya Leone has a single best idea in the entire film. <laughs> Thirty-three minute mark. <laughs> Woo! Like I'm doing now. Uh, you should be drunk on Thanksgiving, folks. If you're not drunk and listening to this, uh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but in terms of the film, uh, yeah, so, and also, on that same note, guys, uh, and you guys can weigh in this, Taya Leone performs one of the worst drunk acting scenes we've ever seen here in the restroom. Come on. Yeah, she is. She's terrible. Yes. Yeah, it's a terrible drunk. Nobody acts like that when they're drunk. She looks like she had a mild stroke, Crest. I mean, come on. You've seen bad <laughs> acting. She's not. Yeah, she did. Uh, it's a terrible many, acting job. You're not job. hanging out with enough drunk people to get a full range of <laughs> No, it's just me. It. I'm all alone here in the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. Quest, you are alone on that one. It's three out of four on that. Sorry. I'm, yeah. I'm all sorry. by myself. No, it's a terrible sorry. job. Like, She's terrible in that scene. She doesn't know how to drunk act properly. Nobody does that when they're drunk. Nobody no, slurs like she that. Does. No, no, that is why. Because I've seen her drunk act before. And she, and really? She is brilliant. That character would not have gotten drunk with Stiller's character. There's no way an FBI agent is going to be hanging out with the apartment manager ever. Come on. That's not even realistic. Most FBI agents drink alone. Not that I would know that, but. There you go. So if, any, if there's any FBI agents listening, yeah, don't put me on a watch list. Uh, hey, Mr. Kovacs, welcome to Shake Shack. Well, I guess we now know who paid for a good chunk of the budget. 37 minute mark. How shameless is that? 
not only are we going to use it as product placement, we're actually going to have one of the characters working in it. Like, um, we're actually going to film the scene. The movie was shot in Trump Tower. Oh, all right. Enough said yeah. there. I, yeah. You know what? I I wished I was wrong about that. The outside shots are all Trump Tower, like the street shots and shit. Oh. But the inside shots was studio. So you're saying you want to rob $20 million from Arthur Shaw. After only a scant uh, 40 minutes of running time, do we finally get to the plot of the film? Did Ocean's Eleven take this long to set up, guys? Literally, it's 40 minutes of running time. We have bullshit that could have been done in 20 minutes. And I get tired of saying this over time. The audience is always ahead of the story on, on stuff like this. Why are you going to drag it out? Why it's do we have to wait 40 paced. minutes? Yeah, it's horribly, horribly, it's horribly paced. paced. 40 minutes to know what we already know, which was given away in the trailer. Like, we already know what the plot of the film is before we even watch the film. So now we have to wait 40 fucking minutes for them to say, okay, now we want to rob $20 million from the guy who, you know, ripped off our pension. It's, it's a, so frustrating. It's a really thin, 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 thin plot. Uh, so you guys in or out? Uh, I was out when I saw Brett Ratner's directing credit, uh, yet sadly I'm still here. 40-minute <laughs> mark on that one. Uh, I just pressed the PH button. Uh, Michael Pena, Pena, Pena is about, a fun, uh, about, Pena. He's about as funny as here as he was in Ant-Man. Um, <laughs> Actually, he was funny in Ant Man, and I would. I gotta give Mr. Uh, Eichelman the win on that one. Yes, he was playing essentially the same character. They're both thieves, right? They're both fucking yeah. They turn out to be thieves. Uh, yeah, he and I great. Nah, I'm being a little hard on him. Yes, Except I thought he was. In this movie, in this movie, he claims he's an electrical engineer and he doesn't right. even know what buttons start. I the machine. know that's. I he's know. just an idiot it, in this movie. Which you could used to right. work at the BK. Yeah, okay. And, and, didn't, and didn't have to show his balls. Uh, you must have been saying your prayers slide. You made bail. Here we go, guys. Eddie Murphy repeats his 48 hours jail intro scene around the 41 minute mark. And if you're expecting the same Eddie Murphy comedy magic, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Holy Seriously. shit. I've got to talk about this because, man, oh, man. Oh, man. oh my God. This is, oh, Let God. it out, Honor. Let it out. Uh, there's nothing worse than a comedian actively trying to be funny on camera like he was in his former films. Uh, Murphy should be wearing a T-shirt that says Desperation. Like, was first of all, was Kevin Hart not available at this point in his career in 2011? And that would have been funny. Himself. He would have yeah, been funny. He would have been amazing. Doug, like, I mean, we oh we, my God. we grew up with Eddie Murphy. We God, we've I'm watching this on SNL on uh, uh, for everything he's done. He's been comedy gold, and to see him here doing like a uh, like what were you saying a Jay Farrow impersonation you know, of what he used to do impersonation of Jay Farrow. Right. doing Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Murphy. What happened yeah. to this guy? It's, it's gross. It is. It un it is. And it undoes all of his other stuff he's done before. It's really hard to really get behind a, this, a guy this talented. If you're going to pay Eddie Murphy the money, Eddie Murphy better perform. And exactly, and he doesn't. Well, the thing about Eddie Murphy is you take his first five or six movies. I, I think you could put his first five or six movies up against anybody. I mean, anybody's first five or six movies because they were so great. But it seems like the longer he's gone and gotten a chance to have control over anything is the worst the movie's gotten. And he, he was a producer on this. Uh, and, you know, he's the co-star. I think I looked at it. Uh, he made $7.5 million for this. Stiller made $15 million really? for this. Really? Jesus. Yes. It, well, and it Stiller's seemed, the star. What yeah. a waste With of money this, that is. Like, it's kind of well, money. Well, uh, no, I heard that was seven point five million was just from the back end for Murphy. Oh, so he got paid on top, on like a line budget on top of that. Yeah. But regardless, I'm regardless, my, I'm just going for my IMDb. No, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, me too, me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we guys can both fight over the IMDb thing. Let me just read to you Eddie Murphy's first six movies. Okay, Forty Eight right. Hours, Brilliant. Trading Places, Brilliant. Best defense. I never heard of this. Crap. Movie. Best defense. Be all Beverly Hills Cop. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. The Golden Childs. Then Crap. of course he did oh, Beverly Hills Cop. Two. I like the Golden Child. I like Golden Child. That's my jam. I love that movie. And then my movie. favorite though, Crap Coming film. to America. And literally I after know, Coming thanks. to America, it is all downhill. From I agree there. with that. I agree with because that. Because he does Harlem Nights, another Forty Eight <laughs> Hours. Then he's in that. When then Boomerang was... though was a highlight in the nineties. That was good. That was But then it's like it's really bad. And then. He goes from like it just starts winding down. He does Beverly Hills Cop three, and then it's like all these weird Metro. family films: Vampire when, in Brooklyn, The Nutty Professor, Doctor Doolittle, Holy Man, Bowfinger, and then it's like Shrek and Daddy Daycare. Then he has his highlight with Dreamgirls, which I'm sorry to say he should have fucking got the Academy Award oh, absolutely. for. Absolutely, he was I believe robbed. That. that was his best movie. And since Dreamgirls, since he got robbed, he's done. Shrek again, another Shrek. Meet Dave, <laughs> Donkey's Christmas Shrek Tax. <laughs> Donkey Two Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> and then his movie Mr. Church got so. Oh, panned. that was terrible too. And no, like, no, no, no. The 
they're saying he might have a chance. I know. I'm just saying I he don't... got so panned by that. critics that but, but he's gonna... it went nowhere in the theater, so nobody's seen it. And now people are saying, oh, I saw it, and like he should get an Academy Award. I think he has it inside of him to be a great actor, but it's just so much shit on his resume. It's not one of these it's people of where shit. he has – 400 movies and 100 out of 400 movies are shit. It's like 70% of his stuff is shit. He believed in Brett Ratner enough to oh, let him who, guide his what? career. What? Brett that Ratner. Oh, shit. my God. Beyond this movie, that's what his Brett me Ratner. Give me I know. a fucking and, break. And he's going to do Beverly Hills Cop 4. Beverly Hills Cop 4 is desperation at that point. It's really... All these aging <laughs> actors are doing these franchises they did 30 fucking years ago just to stay Why? relevant. Why? Uh, Why? Why? Uh, the new uh, Lethal Weapon is... Sick. Yeah, that's a terrible show. On, that's a ter- on, no, are you kidding me? It's one of the best shows on TV. Eh, it's come one on. of the things no, that it's actually Mer- makes me laugh on not, a regular It's not basis. Gibson and... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not watching. Yes, it has fantastic Lethal reviews. Weapon was Gibson well, and has, Danny Glover. I'm sorry. Have I'm not, you watched it? No, no I'm not going to watch it because I saw Lethal the Weapon was a fucking movie <laughs> series. It was better. Sorry, Doug signed the leg. Like, I've already seen the film. I don't need to see a series with two people trying to be Mer- you know, Gibson and uh, um, fucking Glover. Yeah, thank you, thank you. The original weigh ins. Yeah, he's another guy who went off the so, hoop. No, the other guy's tank. great. All right. Not, all right I'm not, we're not going to. Isn't Keenan the, the original? <laughs> no, it's he's the whole thing. All right, all right. He's the oldest. But it was ho- be, Hollywood Shuffle. No, Hollywood let's Shuffle. To be honest, like, let, in no. terms of pop culture, Damon Wayans is the original. All right, let's keep moving. We got half. Oh, she's sorry. Yeah. All right. So basically, Eddie Murphy's uh, career is in a shitter and okay, hasn't really okay, recovered. Okay, we're out of time. We're out of time. Right? After, after 15 <laughs> minutes, yeah, we've come. We're done. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, the end of the, that's the end of your turkey. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed your pumpkin pie. Fuck it, we're out. Uh, thanks for coming, folks. Oh, wait, we got a rest of a... Yeah, shit, we're not thinking. Oh, uh, we're not even like, how many minutes? Uh, hang on. Yeah. Okay, we have the rest but of But no, I want to... No, I really want to take a chunk of time to address that because I think it's a critical issue of this, why the whole film failed. Because everybody who went to see this movie in the theater, not us, obviously, expected Eddie Murphy to be Eddie Murphy. And they just got, you know, a Muzak version of Eddie Murphy or like a Mm -hmm. karaoke version. And that's really what sucks because those people got robbed. They want Reggie Hammond from right. Trading Places. They that do. That character would be perfect. But they didn't oh, get that. Absolutely. That You're right. Been... Doug with the win on it. Uh, rule number one, never give your wall to a thief. Uh, rule number two, never extend your running time with an unfunny sequence of four idiots trying to steal merchandise in a mall. 48 <laughs> minute mark. Boy, who gives but a can shit? Can I just say something? That was the funniest line in the movie. Oh, boy. Where he says, well, he, where, they, where they're like, on. we just stole all this shit. What do you, you know, how do we know <laughs> you're you knew that when I you went into the $264. scene. $264. That was the best line in the right. movie, and it's sad. So to recap, folks, they, they, Ben Stiller assembled his team. It's Michael Pena, the elevator guy. Casey Affleck uh, was another concierge guy. And that stupid-ass Matthew Broderick, who's a bloated Matthew Broderick, who was one of the tenants. Uh, these are the team, and they team up with Eddie Murphy, who is a thief. Who's, you know, he got out on bail, and Eddie Murphy's doing any, you know, an impression of Jay Farrow at this point to uh, uh, band together to rob $20 million from Alan Alda. Okay, here we go. I was on a job a few weeks ago, and my homie got shot in the face. I wish I could do that like uh, Jay Farrell. Uh, if you're wondering where Jamie Foxx got his motherfucker Jones character from Horrible Bosses, look no further than Eddie Murphy's performance in this mess, 49 Minute Mark. Oh, my God. Yep, yes. that's exactly yes. where, yeah. He's doing motherfucker Jones. That's immediately what I thought. A lower key version of it, but still, same character, guys. Uh, Jug, you saw that, right? Horrible Bosses? It, it's not, he didn't steal it yeah. from this movie, no. though. No, Jamie Foxx stole it from this movie. That's he why st- I'm saying he did not. Where, what, because what? they came out the same year. These, oh no! Well, was horrible, Boston. Oh really? Oh no! They went. They busy each other on the set. He got the whole thing. Trust me. Said, yeah, come on, Chris. You know how this fucking works. They all get over. They start dick sucking, and then they stole their character. That's how it works. Oh uh, hey! hey. Oh, metaphorically, metaphorically. Uh, to get into the building, uh, we'll stop the film cold for an unfunny five-minute sequence detailing how these idiots plan to steal the money. The three-minute expeditional dump in Megaforce was A, more entertaining, and B, strangely made more sense. 49 minute mark. Did anybody understand I, what the hell their plan was? I agree. I Thank agree. you. You know what? I'm just disappointed that they didn't actually use the Thanksgiving Day balloon. <laughs> like, I thought they were going to be on top of Snoopy. And they were going to, no. like, it was going to be high up and they were going to jump onto no, the balcony no, we'll or talk, some shit. I know, we'll talk about from that. From the Snoopy? I thought that was brilliant. And I was like, oh, I get it. And look, fo- at, look at the foreign people who work at the hotel, how much they love Snoopy. So they're going to go outside real I quick know. We'll, we'll talk to look about at it. Snoopy. Uh, what type of thief can't open a safe? Uh, the same type of actor who can't recreate his past comedic talents. 57 minute mark. Sorry, another unfair shot. No, not a fair shot against Eddie Murphy. Fuck you. You're slogging. You're slacking. You're slacking. I can't even that pronounce anything. That's prejudicial against thieves. Not all thieves are safe. <laughs> 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 
Uh, crest with the win on that. Uh, we'll keep moving. Uh, probably it'll take me 15. I'll be, I'll be smatter. Probably take me 15 minutes to open. Uh, well, at least they found something for Gabatory Sibby to be to do in this turd. There you go. Okay, so they give. My pronunciation skills are going right out the window, Gabaray. guys. Gabaray. You know when you have like a Thanksgiving dinner and there's one drunk uncle? That's me right now. I'm the drunk, drunk uncle. uncle. I am. You know I'm, what it is? <laughs> I'm the Bobby Moynihan of this uh, podcast right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 They're moving our court date up to Thanksgiving. And now you know the reason we're flushing this Ratner turn on Turkey Day, folks. You're welcome. Hour and one minute Can mark. I just say something? That everybody should have known. The FBI should have known that was some bullshit right uh, yeah, there. Exactly. The rooms open on fucking Thanksgiving. Right. Are, are really the FBI that stupid? What New York court is going to be opening on a federal holiday? Uh, hi, right I'm in not. the FBI. I can't right. make a fucking phone call to confirm this shit. Yeah, so basically what happens is they want to, they want to, he gets off. He's going to get off. The uh, judge is going to let him go. Alan Alda character. I'm sorry, the Trump character in this film. And uh, But they say we have to get him to the courthouse on, on Turkey Day, which, of course, as anybody knows, is going to be closed on a federal fucking holiday. FBI people are too stupid to figure that out. But, okay, we're going to run with that. So they wheel him all the way over to the courthouse. Guess what? Fucking closed, right? There's one, like, lonely security guy that has to answer the door on that one. I, like, you know, like me in the restroom. Just lonely. Opening up that stall. What are the odds they'll be having the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade at the exact time we're filming this movie? Hey, 100%. thank you. You know, your film sucks, and the most interesting part of the heist is the parade. Was anybody watching the parade? I love the parade. I have to say, the I was watching Snoopy, fun. and, like, Woodstock was going by. Wasn't that awesome? Like, that was the best part. I could care less what was happening. I know. And the actually, caper. That, like, distracted me to be like, Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh it's I a parade. Like now. Anybody care about the caper? That's the worst thing. When you do a caper film and nobody gives a shit about the caper itself, that's a problem, right. guys. That's a fundamental screenwriting problem. Now, back off before I pop a cap in your ass. Uh, what decade is this? Murphy keeps talking like he's appearing in one of his better films at the hour 12 minute mark. Because there's like double crosses now. Like, uh, he wants a double cross. It comes down to a safe. They find out there's a secret safe in the penthouse of Alan Alda's character. And it's hidden in the wall. So this is where Ben's just... So they break into the safe. Or they want to break into the safe. Eddie Murphy's trying to double cross them to get the money. Uh, Gabatory Sidibidi, bitty bitty. Um, in a Gabaray, scene. Sidibay. Sidibay. I know. I, 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 and Gabaray, Gabaray, if you're listening, I do apologize, honey. Uh, <laughs> so I also, can, can we admit this whole movie is like a bad episode of Family Guy? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so they break into the safe, and guess what? There's nothing fucking in it, and we'll talk about that in one second. First, though, here is Joan Rivers. Uh, guess we now know what really killed the late comedian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doug got that one. Oh, my She's goodness. in the parade. She's in the Thanksgiving Day parade. She would appreciate that joke, so I'm going to let that. That one stays. That one stays because she would have liked that. Uh, God bless her. This whole car is made of gold. Oh, these idiots could barely break into a, that safe I was just talking about. So now we're supposed to believe they can get a gold-made car down the street level? Sure. Hour and 18-minute mark. All right, guys. Uh, where do we go with this one? They find out that Steve, it's a Steve McQueen car that he has in the living And that's the one he was busting on. Ben Stiller was busting the windows out earlier. It turns out that the, the money he stole, and now, now I guess it's $45 million, he made into a gold car, which is, how did he even manage to accomplish that? But okay, we're going to let that go for now. They have to get the car down to street level, and they're way up on the top floor. I don't know how many floors up. Did they ever say how many floors up? I don't think they did. He's in the penthouse. They never tell you how many floors are It's way the, the fuck up. It's, it's green screen high. Yeah, there uh, you go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Calling bullshit on the window washing cable able to withstand the weight of a gold-made car, guys. Adam no. Savage, drunken myth -busters. You sound like Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, that's not going to withstand the weight, guys. It can barely hold two fat fucking window washers, much less the weight of an entire gold-made car. You know how heavy gold is? It's very heavy, and it's very soft. So if that was actually a solid Ooh. gold car, you could almost bend it. I mean, it would be so ridiculous. It's not yeah. going to happen. All right. You know what was most annoying <laughs> to me about this whole thing wasn't even that they're going to hook a car up to a window washer. You see Eddie Murphy <laughs> taking Listen the, to what you're taking, saying. Listen to what you're saying. I know, but, but listen, but this is the most annoying thing. They, you see him take off this huge pane of glass, which, by the way, that would be fucking heavy as a motherfucker, that gigantic pane of glass that they're taking out. And if you notice, when they pull back the shot, that pane of glass is doesn't go to the floor. There's another little window that's about a foot and a half off the ground with a metal frame. And then in the next shot, that metal is just conveniently cut out and the glass is gone. So, Because I was thinking to myself, how are they going to lift this up and get this car out with the thing like that? Like, they're going to have to cut that and they don't show them cutting it. There's no blowtorches or anything. 
I mean, it's totally ridiculous anyway, but at least have some consistency. All right, I think you're, I think you're, yeah, you're looking too deep here. Uh, film goes all fast and furious. I'm too deep. I'm trying to find logic in tower heights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's who's the drunk one at the table now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> film goes all. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. Film goes all fast and furious around the hour and twenty minute mark, uh, but without the charisma or talent. There you go. On that one. So basically, now because it does become a fast and furious, is now we have to come up with this wild shit about lower. That they want to lower the car on the window washing thing down to a lower level that they can get the car out of the apartment and into an elevator. It's a very small car, but all right. It's like a minion car, but all right. Uh, I got it. Uh, now we're going to add the weight of three grown men onto the cable. Sure, at the hour and 22-minute mark. Right. Uh, they got yeah, climbing down the cable. That wouldn't have happened. They wouldn't have done that with their no. bare hands, guys. Uh, I'm not well, they gonna... had gloves on. Both of them had gloves Oh, on. did they? Oh, I'm sorry. But still, you can't <laughs> physically. Come on. <laughs> on, the, uh, on the count of three. Anyone want to call bullshit these idiots would have been would have been able to easily maneuver a gold car through an apartment building and into an elevator shaft uh, at the hour and 26 minute mark. Now we're getting really fucking stupid because now they, they get the car into the, the lower apartment. They push it into an elevator shaft upwards. But the problem is it's made of gold. Gold is heavy, right? And you can't just fucking be able to hold this. Right. Up right and it wouldn't. And the gold and the elevator car wouldn't have been able to withstand that no. weight either. Guys, it's simple logic. You have to address this shit at a writing level. This doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, that, your whole window, your whole caper film goes out the I window. Mean, you know what would have been more believable <sighs> is if they had brought a couple helium tanks up and just filled up some balloons and attached them to the car and been, like, fucking upping, you know. like No, it would have been more believable if, they, the if they filled those balloons with farts and then attached it to the car and floated <laughs> it out. I mean, come on. Just, Jesus, fuck. Uh, truck, ch truck chase through the Macy's uh, Thanksgiving Day Parade around the hour and 30 minute mark uh, would have every cop in the city after them. First of all, guys, you can't, even if it's a diversion, you can't just drive through crowds of people in the parade. That's, I don't understand how he was able to get away with that and not been shot. First of all, that's a black dude <laughs> driving that. Right, right. Lester, right, it was a doorman. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. That's exactly. In our current climate, uh, that guy wouldn't have, he would have been dead, but all right. Uh, what do you think you're doing? Sacrificing my queen. Who knew the chess motif uh, would have a payoff? They, they do play chess at the early uh, Al, uh, Alan Alda and Ben Stiller. Ratner directs every film like his audience is a group of eight-year-olds. I think that's what it comes down to, right, guys? Ratner thinks we're in, in, inherently stupid. I, he must. I, I, every one of his films really is, is geared at 12-year-olds. I don't think there's any one of his movies. First of all, can we recommend any Ratner films? Has anybody got one off the top of their head that they said they liked? I'm looking through the list right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's so. Did no, the knew, answer is no. Doug, I gotta keep my mouth shut because oh, I actually no. like it. Which one? Oh, oh, no, I, I marginally like that. You know I'm gonna give him one film that he executive produced on. Are you ready? Okay. Jersey Boys. I liked. That. All right, that's the that one was a directed. Uh, but I'm gonna give Doug a little credit oh, on that. Direct? No, okay. I no, actually, I'm just talking directing. Directing. Keep, no, I actually keep watching X Men Last Stand. That's not bad. Uh, yeah. No, no, we're trying to like it. <laughs> well, there is that. Um, I give that a pass only because he came in late on that one. He wasn't really like the first no, choice. No, he but, did do Rush Hour too. By the way, he did direct that. That's when. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's yeah, when, Rush yeah. Hour. I'll give him Rush Blood Hour. Rush Hour was good. That's when it's rapist uh, Brian Singer left the uh, X Men franchise. Tata -ta Brian Singer. Uh, which yeah. one? Rush Hour. <laughs> Ru yeah, first Rush Hour was tolerable, but all right. Rush that's... Hour was tolerable. Yeah, tolerable. Come on. It was fun. No, we need to focus on Brian Singer. All right, we're, all right, we're now. I'm not going to get. That's a whole different podcast. We're not going to get into uh, yeah, his. Well, ex you were just the one talking about dick sucking. Now you don't want to talk about. Brian <laughs> 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 well, it, it does all tie together on this wonderful Thanksgiving holiday with your family. Dick sucking, Brian Singer. Oh, it's awesome. Hot tubs. There you go. Doug, you picked the right podcast to be on this uh, no, Thanksgiving I day. <laughs> Appreciate it, sir. Like, I, said, <laughs> I said, I know you love sci-fi and comic books, and you yeah. want me to tell you. And they said no. Yeah, exactly. They We're don't not want to know. We're not going to get on Brian Singer's case. Uh, he didn't direct this, right? But Brett and Ryder I think oh. enough people have been on Brian Singer's case. Oh, and in his Ayo. hot tub. Ew. <laughs> Mr. Eichelman with the win on that. Uh, we going to do this or what? Oh, was anyone else surprised the car was hidden in the rooftop pool, guys? Anyone? So they have to, they magically get rid of the car. They throw it in that pool we saw at the beginning and they threw the car. I don't know over. how they got into the pool. Uh, Miss Romero. Or, damn it. Mrs. Morat. Mrs. Morano. Ramat. Mrs. Ramat. Man, that tequila was good. Mrs. Morano. God damn it. Uh, sign right here, please. Who fucking cares? Uh, why the hell did they t didn't just melt down the car and mail the apartment employees a cashier's <laughs> check instead of sending them the parts of the car? This is like ordering steaks off the internet and having them deliver an entire set of cow to your doorstep. 
to pay back all the people who lost their pension. Instead of just melting down the car, the gold car, and sending these people, these employees, the former employees, a cashier's check, they sent them the parts of the car. This doesn't, first of all, what are these people going to do with this? How do these people it, know where to go? And, and we're talking like catalytic converters and steering wheels and a fucking because rim. Because apparently all poor people in New York know where the great pawn shop is. No, yeah, it's, well, it's not even a pawn, but you're not going to get the best. You have to get that melted down to get the proper value. A of pawn shop's like, right, exactly. But this doesn't make any sense, guys. It's a, can I just say I, I've the got guy a theory on this. The whole, all right, wait, wait. The guy that inspired the whole thing. The old black guy who was the doorman who tried to kill himself. Lester, he gets yeah. the shittiest piece of the car. He got the steering wheel. That's fucking tiny. Dog, what do you got? What's your theory on this? Okay, this is a long theory. You have to go with me on this. Oh, just my a little God. Bit, All right. Okay? Man. This movie has so many references to other movies. Okay. The doorman starts singing, doing the circle of life at the beginning, which <laughs> refers to Lion King, which Matthew Broderick was in. Okay. Oh, okay. Same with you've got, you've got a red Ferrari, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, right. and the parade, all that stuff that. Okay, in an episode of MASH, which Alan Alda was in, Radar O'Reilly sends back a whole Jeep for about four or five episodes. He pieces the Jeep out and sends it back piece by piece by piece. <laughs> I'm saying Holy this shit. is all tied in to little references back in other things. Rather, That's my insane theory. Doug is the rain man of the show. Um, Kmart sucks. And uh, there you go. All right, that's a long way to go for that. Okay, uh, we can look at it that way, but it doesn't. Uh, but you, references from other stuff is fine, but the film has to make sense. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, right. you're right absolutely. Right. You can't just throw that shit in there just to be to be fun. First of all, Doug's the only one who spotted that out of the four of us. So, so where does that? So basically, the general audiences wouldn't have got any of that. Uh, they just would have saw a shitty film and wonder why Eddie Murphy wasn't funny. <laughs> and where does he go at the end of the film? Does anybody know where the hell, what happened to Eddie Murphy? No, there's no, there's no. Exactly, there's no nothing. payoff there. So what happened, folks, is uh, they make a deal to uh, all the other ones that are involved in the heist get off. And what's his name? Ben Stiller's going to have to do time. And Stiller's uh, final smirk into the camera for the last shot of the film perfectly echoes how Brett Radner feels about releasing this turd to general audiences. Uh, man, what a, what a shitty ending. It's a shitty ending. First of all, like and there's logical. not even any shitty stuff at the end of the credits. Well, so. uh, we should also ask, how did they get the car down from the roof, guys? Anybody want to, like, after it all went down? How did that get down? Where did they, How did exactly. they get it down? It's so right. stupid. How did the four of them get down? Because Stiller was and already arrested. Stiller, like, stoked about going to prison for two years. Yeah, yeah, to get ass raped. That guy's gone, man. He's going to be sucking dick for two years. I mean, there's <laughs> no way around it. Around Sorry. Can I just say the whole thing on Alan Alda, like, being at Rikers or wherever the hell? It's like, I'm sorry, he's a super white-collar criminal. He's, he's not going to Rikers. He's, he's not going to Rikers. He's at the fucking Rikers. prison with the tennis court. Right. He's not going. No, he went. No, he's Alan Alda. going. He's not come going on. to Rikers. He's not going to Rikers. No, That's it bullshit was such to him. Bullshit. Like, come it was a white on. It's a white collar prison. There's a big difference. Yeah. Even uh, Stiller probably would have went to white collar prison. I don't know if he would have went to uh, Rikers. But... If, if he's making a deal with the feds, he'd be at a federal yeah. minimum security yeah, both of them prison. Would. Mostly yeah. white collar crime. He would not be in you exactly. know some fucking hardcore place. Uh, there you go. So there you go, folks. That is a uh, holy shit. That is tower heist for this uh, this turkey day. We took it out. We played with that cranberry sauce a lot longer. We should have. Can we flush it, ladies and gentlemen? Can we please, please flush it? Absolutely. Go What's ahead. That? Make my millennium. Oh no, really? That's it. You guys are really getting sad here. Lazy, lazy. It's so <laughs> awful. I don't know. <laughs> don't. Nobody. How dare you? <laughs> Flush all it right. twice. All right. There you go. I, I got to get default to the guest on that one. All right. Consider it, consider it flush. That is it for this Turkey Day and Thanksgiving episode. I want to thank my lovely co cinematic flushers, Midwest Movie Mogul, Colleen Griffin, and Raging Buddha Bee Movie Queen Norcrest. Thank you as always, ladies. Great job. Or great job. Thank you as always. Jesus, man. I'm that fucking tequila. Fuck me up. No uh, more thank, tequila. No, not on Thanksgiving. I want to thank our very special guest uh, this time, uh, Doug Eichelman, for coming back. Doug, what was worse? Uh, this one or Clock Stoppers? I think this one. This one's way worse. <laughs> well, there you go. There's the bullet point on that one. There wasn't one. even any kissing or anything. No, there was nothing. Kidding. Nothing. Uh, no Jonathan Frakes. Nothing. Uh, thank you, Doug. I appreciate you coming back and joining us. Folks, so check out MovieMadnessPodcast.com. That's our website. Check out the Movie Madness Podcast. And we really appreciate you, Doug, uh, sitting in this holiday with us. Hope uh, we didn't take away from your family too much. No, and I would love to come back again, but don't ever, ever, <laughs> ever have me watch a Brett Ratner movie again. Yes. No, no, that's off the... Uh, we're not that, doing another Brett that, Ratner. That, that, yeah, um, you know what? I'm part of this, and okay. <laughs> Until then, uh, we're going to be back next week to torture you with something else. Uh, oh, next week? 
We're gonna be kicking off our Jingle Turds month for December. It's gonna be very, very exciting. We got a lot of Jingle Turds for you. The worst holiday films ever made, and uh, boy, you're not gonna, you're not gonna wait. Can't, can't wait. I'm drunk. Fuck it. All right, say goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Bye bye. Night. Night. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, this is Honor Knight, and I want to thank you for listening this week and every week as we flush these turds down our cinematic bowl here in the restroom. If you haven't already, please subscribe to us on iTunes and Google Play Music so you don't miss a single episode. You can also follow us on Twitter and use the hashtag PotternFamily, like us on Facebook, circle us up on Google+, and check out all of our episodes at our home restroom on the net, SignalsOfFury.com. Until next time, remember, we're here to flush it so you don't have to see it. I am Honor Knight, and this has been the award-winning Soiled Restroom Cinema.